All right, so uh, trebuchets are interesting. Uh, spoiler alert, at least one of these actually kind of works. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, this is Scrapman, bringing you another episode of Scrap Mechanic, and we are in part two of the trebuchet experiments. And if you haven't seen part one, go check that out right now, because that's when I actually built the entire trebuchet for the most part. This time is the update on actually getting the sling release to work. Now this two-parter was actually made possible by Jesse, one of my uh, top tier patrons on Patreon. And like I mentioned before, included in that is uh, getting your own personalized creation. And he requested trebuchet and I thought about it and I was like, this would actually make a good video as well. So not only does he get a trebuchet out of it, but he also gets a video on a trebuchet out of it. So thanks a lot for your support, Jesse. And thanks to all you other patrons as well. You're really helping out this channel a lot. If you're interested in becoming a patron, check the links down in the description. Now on to the trebuchet. So this one over here was the one that we were working with from last time and this is kind of uh, let's let's actually see I haven't used this since that episode. Let's see if uh, Well, so yeah, th this was the method that I was using. Uh, this has been improved as well All right, so we just got to lift this up a little bit. This is not derpy and Completely unnecessary at all, but uh, then we just got to unhook this right uh Oh, oh, it, uh, oh no, we did it. We did exactly what we weren't supposed to do. Oh, this is terrible. Here, let me see if I can uh, fix this. I'm not gonna be able to fix this, am I? Come on, oh, oh, I think we might've fixed it. Oh no, there it goes, there it goes. Yeah, th this was a terrible design, people. This was like a, a legitimately Terrible design. I have no idea. No, stop going back. I want you to come back this way. I need the sling back over here. Oh, there we go. Is it gonna stay over here? Oh, oh no, load it, load it. Oh, no, don't. Come on. All right, all right. All right, and it's gonna swing in and down. All right, all right, we kind of got it. I just want to go down a little bit. Uh, all right, I think that's good enough. I think that's good enough. Now, now we can take this, put a thingy on it, delete that. Now the trebuchet is loaded, so if we unhook this and then get rid of our lift, it should look like it's gonna throw it. Whee! Wait, what? What? That never happened once before, ever. You guys saw the last episode. We did like a ton of attempts at throwing with this exact trebuchet and it never threw it. And it managed to actually throw it this time, but it went backwards. So I was trying to illustrate the problem with this and we just came up with another problem instead. The real problem though, is that it doesn't release it. Cause a normal trebuchet has a mechanism that actually releases the sling. So there's a sling around your item. And then as the trebuchet goes around, gravity actually causes the sling to open up. So I made a mechanism that is actually exactly that. It's pretty much the same way as a real trebuchet works. So let's um, go ahead and do this here. And I'll also I've improved uh, the lift mechanism here. Thanks to Game Bite, a fellow scrap mechanic gave me this uh, 25 piston block here. So all I gotta do is press the button here and that has enough force to actually push it up just like my lift would, but in a nice slow and more controlled manner. So then once that's pushed up, then I just gotta push this button here, and that's the equivalent of, uh, you know, locking it in. Uh, so these are all replacements for what manpower would normally do in a trebuchet. Normally we'd have the, a bunch of people uh, probably pull with a rope, pull the trebuchet down, so instead we have the pistons, and then uh, instead of having the lever release, we just have this button release. So now what we gotta do, we gotta unhook that, and... Give the, give the creation an update by placing a block down so it actually falls. Uh, then we need to unhook this. There we go. Okay, so now, here's how this works. You can see that the basket is a little bit different. We got some bearings on the front and back here. And then if you look over here, there is a pin, basically. So what this is designed to do is as this arm swings out that way, gravity actually causes this to fall out. So that pin falls out. So then what's supposed to happen is this is supposed to open up right here. So rather than being locked in like this, it actually opens up like that. 
so that it's supposed to release the projectile, but it doesn't quite work that way. You'll see exactly what happens in three, two, one, go, and... All right, so that time it actually didn't really... Oh, you know what? That was my mistake. You see those you see those bearings right there? Those are supposed to be released. So I made a mistake there. Here, let's try this again. Because believe it or not, the pin release, the sling release actually works. The problem is that the sling release doesn't do what it's... doesn't have the final result that it's supposed to have of making the projectile go forward for some reason. The release mechanism works, but the projectile for some reason still gets stuck, and I don't know why. All right, so now if we delete that... Okay, there we go. Oh, I gotta delete this too. And that. All right, so now when I press this button, you should see that this pin gets released and the sling kind of opens up, but for some reason, we still have issues, you'll see. Here we go in three, two, one, go. And there you go, the sling gets released, but for some reason, it just doesn't, the projectile does not quite make it out. So this is kind of how a real trebuchet would al uh, allegedly be built. Um, and there's also another method of rather than having the pin be in a hole, you can have a pin sticking out and then a loop around the pin. So that way when a trebuchet goes up, the loop comes off of the pin and then your projectile gets released. And I actually tried that method too, but I got the same result as this. And I don't think I actually saved that one on a lift. So, uh, now we're down to my final method here. You might notice that this one looks a little bit different. And that is because it is essentially doing what a trebuchet is supposed to do with a- It has its own built-in release mechanism, but it is a very different release mechanism uh, to cater to Scrap Mechanic's strange physics. And even with Scrap Mechanic's uh, strange physics, you still get inconsistent results because of it. So uh, all we have to do is that, and then we gotta do the same thing over here. We're gonna release this and release this. So first, I'll show you it in action. We're gonna see if it works. Hopefully it works on the first try, and then if it works, I'm gonna show you exactly why it works and what is different about this one than the other ones. There's a lot more bearings to uh, loosen up here than the other ones, though. Oh, and I also gotta make sure that I get this thing released. Oh, don't fall. All right, I think we are ready to go. All right, you guys ready for this? This is supposed to be the successful version of the trebuchet. Here we go in three, two, one, go. Hey, look at that. Oh, it totally worked. All right. Hey, oh, it hit the tree. So the only problem with these trebuchets is that uh, because we have a lack of manpower to reload it, we just have to delete it and then uh, spawn a new one is the easiest way to do it. All right. So it's facing the opposite way now, but I'll show you exactly what's happening here. The reason why there is a split or a gap in the uh, sling is because the sling is actually designed to literally open up, like literally split in half. So we're gonna bring it back down here. I'm gonna show you exactly what is happening here. All right, so here we go. You can see we got the, our projectile in our sling here. And the reason why this works is because when this thing goes, the entire sling actually separates, so it, it releases the projectile in a much more guaranteed fashion because the sling is no longer even touching the projectile. And the way that I did that, without using any type of automated systems, because remember, my initial goal was to have a sling that is purely powered by the gravity and motion of the, mechan of the uh, entire mechanism. I didn't want any sensors, I didn't want any powered bearings or anything like that, so you can see all the bearings are loose, we're gonna loosen these ones up here, and these are the key bearings right here. So you can see that the sling has a one block gap right here. So what happens is, as it swings around, this entire thing rotates on these bearings around this way, and then when that happens, it hits this right here because of the one block gap. So I have these wedges right here, and these are actually adjustable. If I delete these and place these in a different spot, it'll change the release point. So I can actually change the angle of release using these wedges. So those wedges actually push each arm of the sling out to the side thanks to these bearings right here. And that's what creates, creates the entire sling to actually release the projectile. I wish there was a way that I could do it in slow motion in the game, but I'm gonna have to do that in post-production so I won't get to see the slow motion, but you will. So hopefully I can do this in a way that uh, I have a good view of it. So let's go ahead and press this button again. I'm gonna try to get a good view. We're gonna do this in slow motion so we can hopefully see it work. Here we go in three, two, one, go.
So that was my solution to our trebuchet troubles. Now that we can actually see the landing area of these, actually that's, that's not too far of a distance. You know, it should be farther considering it's a trebuchet, but this is scrap mechanic. You can't really expect too much. Let's take a couple more shots. The only problem is trying to set this thing down in the same exact spot every time. I'm gonna mark out the spot that I put it on the lift. All right, now we get our official spawn point. So let's see how consistent this thing is with its shots. So if you just press these two buttons, they'll automatically get in, into place because those are under pressure. And then once it's uh, released, it'll go there. And we just got to make sure that we press this button before we release those ones. Otherwise, the weight will not fall. It'll just uh, be held up by that thing. All right. And then we just got to release all of the bearings. There we go. We got those two. We got those two. We got... Uh, make sure we unhook the projectile and then we got these two All right, and we are ready for our second shot. Here we go in three two one go. Oh I love the way whoa that looked like it was going way farther. Look at that All right, uh, apparently I mean, I don't know what I expected to be honest scrap mechanic physics are not always the most reliable physics But that was actually a really good shot I think it, it varies sometimes how effective the, re the release mechanism is. Sometimes there's some resistance and they don't separate right away, and sometimes they separate really well like on that one. So let's do uh, like three more shots. We'll have five shots total and we'll see what the spread is like. All right, loading up for shot number three. Here we go. All right, in three, two, one, go. I forgot to do exactly what I told you guys not to forget to do, which was release this thing first. <laughs> All right, and in three, two, one, go. Oh, that one released pretty well too. Let's see how it lands. Not bad. I think that might've actually landed even farther than the higher one, um, but it landed on a, on a back slope, so it got pushed back a little bit. All right, so that's two out of, or three out of five shots. Let's see where the next the next two of them land. All right, shot number four is loaded up. Here we go in three, two, one, we're off. We're having some pretty good releases. It seems like that first shot was like a dud almost, but the other the other shots so far have been really good. Let's do one more shot and see what our final results are. All right, here we go for shot number five. I think it's gonna go farther than any other ones. Let's see, here we go, and go. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know why sometimes, like everything was exactly the same, literally, but for some reason the release mechanism didn't wanna go that time. So I'm not gonna count that one. Let's do one more real shot that actually works. Cause I wanna see how the distance is when it actually does uh, release. But once you get in a groove here, it's actually not too much of a hassle, like it's not too big of a deal to reload your next shot, especially if you have a position for your lift all marked out. Alright, all we gotta do is just untatch all of this. Attach this. And delete this. And we're ready to go in 3, 2, 1, release! Alright. Well, we started off not too great then we then we ended up going really really great and then we ended off horrible so that's always a great way to uh it's always a great way to do it ended off on your worst so i want to address some of the comments from last week's episode a lot of you were requesting as a solution to create a stopper bar now here's why i did not create a stopper bar a trebuchet is a type of catapult but not all catapults are trebuchets. A trebuchet is a very specific kind of catapult that does not have a stopper bar. If I was to put a stopper bar in there so that when the weight goes down and the arm goes up, if it would hit a bar to stop in order to release a projectile, that would make it no longer an actual trebuchet. That would make it more of like uh, another type of catapult called like, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's called like an, an onager or something. And there's like another type of catapult that also has a stopper. But that is a different mechanism than an actual trebuchet. So it's a good idea and it's something that is actually used in those types of uh, weaponry. But it would make it no longer a trebuchet. So that's why I intentionally avoided doing that. What a trebuchet actually is, is it just uses a, a counterweight and a swinging arm and then a sling that releases at a certain point. So I was trying to emulate that as close as possible and this was the final result. So let's do 
A big finale shot. Let's actually- Oh, I'm gonna try to launch myself. How about that? Let's do a, a, a finale where I launch myself. Hopefully, I can actually put a, um... Oh, what should I call it? Hopefully I can put a seat in there without it falling off. Let's find out. And I'm actually gonna launch myself off the cliff over here. All right, hopefully this works. I'm gonna put a toilet down. We're gonna connect the toilet. Or we're gonna. Uh oh, that was a mistake. All right, well hopefully this works. The toilet has some weird edges and stuff that I'm worried are gonna get caught somewhere on the. Uh oh, that doesn't look like it's gonna work very well. Uh, well we'll see what happens. Uh, the only thing is I gotta get in the toilet immediately after pressing the button. So if I can press the button and then uh, release the toilet, let's find out. But that does not look good. It's not supposed to be like that. I'm actually worried we're gonna, we're gonna fall through. It already separated. Why is this, why is this so bad right now? This is not gonna work. The, the toilet isn't even touching. All right, here we go. It, uh... Wow, that was such a great ride. I'm so glad we decided to do this. Yay. All right, guys. I think a bathtub might work a little bit better, I hope. I really hope it releases me. That'd be really disappointing if it doesn't. If not, we'll just have to try again. But I've also put the switch on a timer, so I'll have enough time, hopefully, to get into the bathtub um, and be released. But now we have to make sure that we set everything. All right, please don't fall, bathtub. All right, that's all set. These are all set. I think it's all looking good. We're gonna launch ourselves in a bathtub trebuchet. Here we go in three, two, one. It, I'm missing it. Where, where's my, oh, there we go. Three, two, one, go. All right, is the timer going? The timer's going? All right, we're ready. We are ready to get released. Here we go. Woo! Seriously? Seriously? All right, here we go. I don't know why the frames are so bad right now. Oh, they're coming back. They're coming back. All right, in three, two, one. We're pressing the button. We're getting in the bathtub, and now he's got to wait for the moment of truth. It's going to work this time. Please work this time. Oh, my God, please work this time. Ah. <laughs> It doesn't work this time. Maybe just the trebuchet just does not like bathtubs. Might be too big for the sling. Maybe the pressure from the bathtub is- Oh, here we go! I think the pressure from- I think the bathtub is too wide. And the pressure from the bathtub actually puts too much on the sling, preventing it from, uh, opening up. All right, you ready for my brilliant idea? You ready for my genius idea? I don't know if you can handle this. That's it. If it likes the, uh, if it likes this thing, maybe just putting a chair on it is all we really need to do. Hopefully. Actually, you know what? I might want to have it be on the top here. There we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Eh. All right, now I'm going to get in the seat. All right, please work. Please work. Please work. Please work. Please work. Here we go. Ah. If at first you don't succeed, maybe you should find a new job. All right, maybe this will work. Maybe, maybe like a, a bigger seat, but not quite as heavy as the tub. I don't know. I don't know how heavy the tub even is. We're gonna try this seat, see if this works any better. I'm hoping that it does, because otherwise I will be a very sad scrap man. And we're getting the seat. Please work, 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 please work. Here it goes! We're gonna see what happens if I just stand right here, and then I'm just gonna press that button. Is it? Oh, I gotta press this one. Oh! All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go in three, two, one. And we got. Oh, all right. It, well, it threw us, and it threw it threw us one way, and it threw the uh, the the beam the other way, the support beam the other way. That was actually kind of cool. I don't know if we're gonna get anything more successful than that, but I'm tempted to try one last time for the end of this episode. All right, we're just gonna try it this way. This is our last ditch effort. If you guys enjoyed the episode, make sure that you hit the thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite part was. And if you wanna see some more fun stuff, stick around to the end screen after this. There'll be some other videos for you to watch there. And uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss more future gaming content like this. We're gonna press this button, hop in the seat here, 
and uh, see what happens. I hope to see you guys in the next video. This has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. We just did it. It actually worked. I can't believe it worked for the end of the episode. That's amazing. Bye.